Okay, so today we're going to talk about nasal examination. So there's not going to be as much for you guys to physically do with nasal exam examination today, um, just because um, some of the stuff we don't have and some of the stuff is like doctor only stuff, but I just kind of want you to understand where we're coming from with these. All right, so the, basically the visual exam is going to be the biggest part of what um, you guys are going to be looking at. Um, so we're going to be looking at discharge. Clear, cloudy, colored, bloody are all discharges that we might see. Um, so clear discharge. Um, if you see clear discharge, clear discharge is actually normal. Um, dogs are going to have a little bit of discharge on their nose, um, maybe damp, a little bit of damp nose. Now it shouldn't be like tons where it's like running down their face like a little kid with a snotty nose. Um, but a little bit of clear discharge is normal. There is nothing wrong with that. Um, sometimes you'll have people that come in and say, oh, well his nose is normally dry and it's wet today and so I think he's sick. That's not necessarily a good um, judge of whether something is actually sick or not is clear discharge. So clear discharge can be normal. Um, Cloudy discharge, however, is never normal. That is definitely a problem, and your animal is definitely sick and needs to be seen. Um, so this cloudy discharge, this is kind of like a yellow discharge. Um, you always want to note the color, yellow, green, um, like, you know, what it, what it looks like, because that can make a difference to the doctor. So cloudy discharge, um, uh, that looks like a puppy that might have, like, distemper or something like that. So um, distemper is one of the things we vaccinate for. Um, and distemper can cause really nasty, nasty upper respiratory infections. Um, so we want to know exactly what color it is, so what color our, color our discharge is, pink, blue, purple, obviously, um, we're hoping not to see those colors, but um, this kind of discharge is obviously not normal. Uh, bloody discharge, um, seeing a dog that looks like this is obviously a concern, so you want to know why is the dog bleeding, was there some type of trauma, so were they hit by a car and now they're bleeding from their nose, um, maybe they got in a fight and now they're bleeding from their nose. Um, also, one of the big things that we may see nosebleeds from is dogs that are anemic or dogs that have a bleeding disorder. Um, this dog here actually had gotten into rat poison, and rat poison thins the blood and causes things to bleed, causes them to bleed out. That is one of the ways that they die from rat poison. So um, rat poison can cause them to bleed from their nose. So it's very important to note bloody discharge and especially how much. Is it a small amount or is it a ton? Like this is a problem, obviously. Um, so then um, we want to notice, do they have any sneezing? Are they sneezing because of allergies? Are they sneezing because of irritation? Did they get something up in their nose? We've actually pulled things out of dogs' noses. Um, so is there... Um, sneezing going on and when they're sneezing are they producing snot are they producing clear discharge are they producing blood those are things to note um then we want to look for obvious malformations so um, we're going to talk about some different malformations we see stenotic nares is probably the first one and so with the stenotic nares this picture here is showing um what a normal looks like like what an abnormal looks like the abnormal is this side and it's kind of like their nose is squished down and this one, the nose holes open more. So you guys can kind of see the open here and then the squish down here. That stenotic nares is a genetic, just malformation. Um, it's really common in your short, squished face breeds. So like um, your bulldogs, your pugs, your um, Boston Terriers, sometimes in your um, Cavaliers. So you guys can take a look at them, see if they have stenotic nares. Um, and all that means is that um, their nose hole is closed and so it's harder for them to breathe so if you were to take your nostrils and hold them in it would be harder for you to breathe so um, there is a surgical repair where we actually can cut out a piece of the nostril and open up the nose hole so they can breathe a little better um, so that's a very um, easy surgery that we can do um, takes it actually doesn't take that long you can actually do it with cautery you can just cauterize off the um, so basically burn off the part of the nose that's the, the nose that's closing down and it's really easy surgery. Um, looking for growth. So they can have like little growths in there, little polyps that develop that can um, block the airway and make it hard for them to breathe. Um, or they can have hyperkeratosis. So hyperkeratosis, and you'll see this a lot in older dogs, where they actually get this overgrowth of um, 
skin cells on their nose. And so they're actually got like extra layers of cells. And so the nose is actually thicker than it should be. And it gets this really like dinosaur looking appearance to it. Um, you can get hyperkeratosis too on elbows. So you see it a lot in um, big dogs that lay on like hardwood floors. So Scarlett has them on both of her elbows. And it's just from that pressure um, on this, just whatever that pressure is. So the skin has a tendency to get just a little bit thicker. Um, there's, they're not really sure why this happens. It's just like basically an overgrowth of cells. And what basically happens is we have to just put some stuff on there to keep the cells from growing so fast. We can scrape it down, um, do some surgery to remove it if it's really uncomfortable, but it doesn't do any harm to the animal. It's not actually going to kill them or anything. It just looks weird. Um, and then the other thing we want to do is after that visual exam, we want to know, can they find a treat in your hand? Can they find something really yummy? So can they still smell? Do they have a good sense of smell? So you can take a treat, you can show it to them, you do the thing behind your back, switch it around and you hold it out and let them smell. Can they figure out which hand the treat is in? Now, not every dog is smart enough to do that. Sometimes they're just that dumb, but even just opening it, opening your hand up so they can't see it, and they can kind of smell around your hand. You want to use something that's very fragrant. So a lot of times we use like chicken or we'll use wet dog food instead of an actual bone treat because that has a tendency to make them want to smell a little bit more. Um, we also use um, broth that's in little ice cubes that also, also has a tendency to have a strong aroma so they can really smell it. So nasal swabs. Um, we can do nasal swabs to obtain cells and mucus for further testing. So maybe you found a polyp in there. Maybe they have some weird discharge and we need to, um, we need to get a sample of that. You can take that swab and you're going to shove the uh, cotton tipped end up the nose and, uh, and you're going to kind of roll it around and pull it back out and stick it back into the um, culture swab. And I will have these laid out for you guys to look at so you can look at the culture swabs. Um, and depending on what you're sending out for, whether you're looking for um, viral, DNA, um, some type of testing, this is exactly what the wand looks like when they do um, coronavirus testing. They shove it way up your nose or into the back of your throat and swab, depending on which one you're getting done. Um, when they stick it back in here, they can be sent it away for testing. Um, so this is more common in large animal species. Um, it can definitely be uncomfortable for a smaller patient, but it doesn't usually require anesthesia. But it is going to require you to hold them down and definitely um, possibly even use a muzzle if they're trying to bite to get that swab far enough up the nose. So you guys can watch this video here and then answer the questions about the video because um, I'm not going to have you guys do this because it's really uncomfortable for our patients. But you guys can look at these so you can see what they look like. There is um, media down here in the end of the culture swab that this goes into to preserve the virus or the bacteria or the DNA that has been collected so that it can be sent to the lab. Radiographs and MRIs. So we obviously do not have an MRI machine. Those are multi-million dollar machines. And we do not have um, an x-ray machine because again, those are thousands of dollars and we don't we need a veterinarian to read x-rays anyway so we don't need to take x-rays here um but radiographs um are almost of the head are almost always done under sedation so um if we're doing a leg or something like that the patient doesn't need to be sedated we'll talk more about radiology during the senior year but of the head they're almost always done under sedation there is a possibility that you might not need sedation if the dog's really good and will hold still um but Radiographs uh, check for presence of abnormalities and positioning is the key. So um, having a dog position just right so you can see what you're looking at. So whether you're looking for um, abnormalities in the nose or even in the ears, we can look at the inner ear on x-ray. Um, that is going to be something that we can do with radiographs. So these three here are radiographs and this is an MRI. So radiograph, 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 and this is the MRI. So in this one, this is a lateral radiograph. The dog is laying on its side, looking straight ahead, and the plate is like this, so they're laying on a table, um, with their head on the table, and the head down. With this, we can see the entire nasal cavity. So it's kind of crazy how big their nasal cavities are. This is the tip of the nose here, and then this is the brain. This is the eye socket up here. 
And then this is the mouth. These are all the teeth that you can see. And all this up in here is nasal cavity. And like you can look at the canine tooth, the root of the canine tooth goes way up into the nasal cavity. And so sometimes when we have nasty drainage coming from the nose, it can be actually from a tooth infection because the roots of these teeth go all the way up into the nasal cavity. Um, sometimes when we see swollen jaws down here, it's because of an abscess of a to tooth root, and that's because these teeth roots go all the way down into the jawbone. So um, that's the nasal cavity. Now, this is a normal x-ray. This dog looks good. There's nothing wrong. Um, this back here is the tympanic, um, like, so the tympanic membrane, and then the, um, this is the, they call the tympanic boule, which is like the inner ears. So that's the part you can't see by looking in with your eye with the otoscope. This um, is actually the, um, the inside of the ear. So it should be black like that. We don't want to see any, um, anything. If it was white or really cloudy in there, it could be a sign of infection. This dog here is on an, it's what we call obliqued. So it is laying with its head kind of like tilted. And so the, radi the, the radiograph is actually shooting through a, at an angle. Um, and what that does, it allows us to see both sides of the top jaw and both sides of the under jaw. So we have a canine here and a canine here. And you can kind of see there's a roof of the mouth here and the rest of the teeth are here. So we can actually look at the entire uh, jaw looking for abscesses in the teeth. But then we can also find things like this right here. So this is a mass inside the nasal, nasal cavity. So this is actually an abnormality there, that little mass should not be there. It should be all clear and easy to see like this. Anything white on here is bone. Anything black is air. So this thing here is actually a mass. So that is a problem and that maybe this um, animal has had some strange discharge or something like that and that's why they took an x-ray. Again, this right here is the tympanic boule. So that is the um, inner ear that they're looking at. You can see it's black, which is good. The other one's kind of hard to see because it's up in here where the skull is. This is the back of the skull where the brain is at. So um, you can't see through the skull into the brain. Obviously there's a little bit of lightness there, but um, that you can't see where the brain's at. This here is a picture literally looking up into the roof of the dog's mouth. So the do dog's jaw has been pulled open and the plate has been set underneath underneath the dog's head so that the x-ray is shooting down through the, through the upper jaw to um, look at this. So they're looking to see, um, is there anything going on in the nasal cavity, like in the nasal cavity, so you can kind of see um, the nasal cavity on this and they can do a really good picture to see if there's anything going on that they're worried about. The little nose is right here, you can see that. So this is the upper jaw, these are the canines, so the big, two big teeth, and then coming back. And we can also see, is there anything wrong in here? And it looks um, like this side's a little bit darker, so you, this means this is normal and this one's abnormal. This one's so white. This one is showing signs of infection. So this white is actually infection going on. So we can see that the infection that says right near the right, the infection's on the right side of the dog and not the left. The left looks pretty, pretty normal. That black is exactly what we want to see. That means there's a lot of air in there. Air does not show up on x-ray. It is black. So when you look at a set of lungs, the lungs should be very black because there's a lot of air in them. So that's what this is here. This is showing signs of infection with the white. So um, now let's look at the MRI. So this is our MRI. You would have to go to a specialty practice to get an MRI done. Your local veterinarian does not have an MRI machine. Um, they, so you'd have to go to like Akron Veterinary Referral, um, Ohio State, MedVet, something like that to get an MRI. Um, they're very, 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 very expensive. They cost three to four thousand dollars to get done. So you better love your animal. Um, and then it requires anesthesia or sedation. So an MRI takes tiny little sections, um, hundreds of pictures, really fast, um, and it can see all the way through into the inside of the brain. So it can see inside through bone. So they're able to see um, deep inside the skull and things like that. So um, when we get these MRIs done. You get hundreds of pictures to look through, where with an x-ray, you only get the view that you take. So you get one single picture. Um, and you can take multiple pictures, but you just get that just one little freeze. This is hundreds of sections, so you have lots to look through, and you can kind of look at them like a picture book, so it can kind of like flip open, and you can kind of watch it in fast motion as, it takes, as it's taking those pictures. These x-rays take, you know, 10 seconds to take once you get the dog positioned. Not even that, I mean, it's a click of a button and it's taking the picture just like a flash, like using your phone. 
the MRI can take you know 30 minutes depending on what you're what what you're taking pictures of how big your patient is. I mean, it can take an hour. It takes a long time. Um, and they have to hold very, 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 very still. They don't hold still, um, the MRI would be blurry, we would be wasting our money. So we have to sedate them and keep them under sedation for the entire time. So this is an MRI of a dog head and they have a, a nasal carcinoma. So you can see it should be black like this. That's what it, the, the nasal cavity should look like. And it's gray and cloudy over here because there's a growth in there and that nasal carcinoma is cancer. So carcinoma referring to cancer. Um, carcinogens is something you guys have probably heard of, carcinoma cancer. So and this is the brain here and then these are the eyeballs. And then, um, so that's just a section of the dog's head. Um, and there's a video here that you guys should watch to see what an MRI looks like and how an MRI is done. Rhinoscopy. So this is something that a lot of vet clinics have the ability to do. We have a rhinoscopy machine at my clinic. And we use it a lot more um, in large animal than it is used in small, small animal. We can use it in small animal. But it's used to diagnose abnormalities. And the nice thing is, is it's got this long, flexible thing. Looks like a little tube on the end of it. And it's got a camera on the end. So we can see all the way up into the nasal cavity. Now, when we do a nasal exam, we can use the end of a, the um, otoscope, which is the one that we look in the ears. You can use the end of the otoscope to shine up into the nose and look up into the nose, but you're only going to see so far. This, you can go clear up into the back of the nasal cavity because it's open like that. Um, and I will show you what a nasal cavity looks like in a bear skull that I have. So you guys can kind of see how big the nasal cavity would be of like a dog, a big dog. So if your dog's big enough, like this is a Doberman, they can shove this rhinoscope pretty far up and look for abnormalities up there. Um, it can be also used to be removed foreign bodies. So if the dog has something stuck up in its nose, some of these have like little, um, clamps on the end that you can use um, and you can kind of like try to pick things up and you also can use them to take biopsy samples so if there's a sample of a mass up in there we can take a piece of it and then we can send that little piece out to a lab and see if it is cancerous and if we need to worry about um, trying to remove that or if we should just leave it alone um, so there's a YouTube video you can watch of a biopsy sample um, this procedure requires anesthesia. It is not comfortable. It is painful. So they usually, they, they have to put the dog or cat or horse or cow or goat or sheep under anesthesia so that they're able to perform the exam. Um, again, like I said, it's really common in large animals, especially in horses, race horses a lot of times if they're having breathing problems or nosebleeds, like they can do rhinoscopy to see if there's something going on in there. Nasal flush. Um, this is something that we've done in my clinic. It's pretty neat to see. Um, it's a really easy way to help remove foreign bodies. Um, so if they have foreign bodies up in their nose, which is just a foreign bodies is a big word for like something that shouldn't be there. Um, so you can flush one side of the nasal cavity and they'll actually come out the other side because like I told you guys, this is all connected up here. Um, you can breathe in one nostril, Breathe in the other nostril. It's all going to the same place. So your whole cavity up here is connected. So if you flush up into one, it'll come out the other. So if you guys have ever heard of a neti pot, um, if anyone's ever done a neti pot, um, you actually can like push your pour, like it looks like a little teapot and you pour basically salt water through your sinuses and it goes up one nostril and comes out the other. And obviously you have to hold your breath while you're doing it, but it actually cleans out your sinuses. So if you have a really bad cold, it'll help clean out all those sinuses. So we can flush animal sinuses the same way. Um, we can collect fluid from these flushes and we can, because the fluid we would use would be sterile and we could collect the fluid from these flushes and send out samples to see um, what the animal is sick from or what kind of bacteria or virus might be in there. Um, this must be done under anesthesia. They're not gonna hold our breath like we would for a neti pot. Um, so we have to sedate them um, to clean out this. Um, and it's just, um, you can just do up one side of cavity and then out the other. Um, or you can even insert a needle into the sinus cavity if you need to, to flush out from higher up because you have cartilage up here that you can put a needle through and flush out that sinus cavity. This is a really cool video of a cat um, having its uh, sinus is flushed and it's really, really neat. So watch the video and answer the questions because that's a really good video to watch. 
And then um, vaccines. So you guys will do this at some point. We'll have some animals that need um, nasal vaccines, and you guys will get to do this. Um, so intranasal vaccines go right up into the nose. The one that is common in small animal is kennel cough or bordetella, and that's flushed up into the nasal, nasal cavity, and it provides localized instant immunity. So that means if the virus is breathed in, it comes in contact with those antibodies right there in the nose, and that's what we want. Um, it's definitely way more common in large animal. Um, it's mostly for upper respiratory diseases in animals. Um, you have to be careful when administering to brachiocephalic breeds, so the short-faced breeds, because um, they may like almost feel like they're drowning. So if you've ever had anything put up your nose or accidentally jumped in a pool and got water up your nose, you know it burns, it doesn't feel very good. So this does is uncomfortable for them. Um, so as you're administering this, you want to go from one nostril to another back and forth. And if you have a brachiocephalic breed, you're going to want to give them a break halfway through. So let them, you know, sneeze and snot, um, and then you can go ahead and finish administering the um, vaccine. And then, so like I just said, most common dog vaccines are Bordetella, and then canine influenza is another one that we give um, in the nose. We give canine Bordetella here in the nose. You can also give canine Bordetella orally now, so you just have to make sure which version you have. Um, and there's a video here that you can watch on how to give intranasal vaccines in dogs. And I want you guys to watch that video. This is something that you guys should practice, but you're going to practice with air. You're not going to actually give the vaccine. You're just going to practice holding the dog's head up and going back and forth between nostrils and administering about a cc of air, just showing what it would be like. And the dogs you can are going to kind of struggle. They're not going to like want you to do that. So, um, I just want you guys to see what that's like to handle them. So you have videos to watch, questions to answer, and then I'm going to show you guys what a skull looks like, and I'm going to talk about the nasal cavities, and I will also have that out for you guys to look at tomorrow along with the, um, the culture at samples. So I'll grab that skull quick. So this is a black bear skull, and as you guys can see, um, it looks just kind of like a dog skull would. Um, and if you can look real close, I'll try to get my camera in focus, um, you can see this is the nasal cavity here, and you can see all that cartilage in there. And so if you look, there's not really a divider. It goes straight in. It's exactly the same, and it's the same if you look in the skull back here. This is the back of the nasal cavity right there. So that's the back of the nasal cavity. And then you can kind of look right here is also part of the nasal cavity. And that's the roof of the mouth. So um, that's kind of neat just to kind of look at. And you can see all these little holes in the face. All those lead, all those little openings lead into the nasal cavity and help with the animal's sense of smell. So that's one of the reasons animals have such good senses of smells is because their nasal cavity is huge and they have all these openings to help with, um, help with the nasal cavity. So one thing I also want you to note is that this here, these are where the tears drain down into the nasal cavity. So we talked about making sure the tear ducts work. So those are like where the tear ducts drain down into the nasal cavity. And they have those on both sides. You guys can kind of see there and you can see that they drain, drain directly down into the nasal cavity right in here on either side of where the eye socket should be. So just a beat up, little beat up bear skull that was given to me, but um, it's pretty cool to look at. So if you guys have questions, please ask. But otherwise, um, you guys need to answer your questions. Um, practice administering vaccines and then you also need to um, do a basic nasal exam so just a basic like look at the dogs look up in the nose notice the difference between a brachiocephalic breed so look at those cavaliers versus like the bashans um, and you can really see the differences